from ACI Europe, and I'd like to welcome you to our second uh, WBP webinar of the year, uh, focused this time on data management and ICT. As ACI Europe, of course, we continue to closely monitor the impact of the crisis on airports, and we're also very busy engaging with the EU institution and European states on the restart of international travel, as you can imagine. In terms of impact, um, our latest traffic data shows no recovery yet, especially for the EU, EA, Swiss and UK markets. Um, we have data for the first quarter, which shows a minus 88% decline in passenger numbers compared to pre-pandemic level 2019. And that contrasts indeed with the rest of Europe, which stands at minus 55% in the first quarter, where we see that a recovery, although it is slow, but still a recovery is underway, driven by the domestic markets in Russia and, and Turkey. So total Europe, we're at, uh, we were at minus 82% in the first quarter, again, compared to 2019 pre-pandemic levels. Um, we have data up to the 11th of April, and uh, unfortunately, uh, there's not much change in the dynamics of, of passenger traffic. Uh, still at minus 80% for the total of European airports, minus 87% for the EU, EEA, Swiss and UK airports, and minus 48% for the rest of the, the continent. We will be uh, sending the details of this data to our world business partners today, and we're also busy finalizing a new traffic forecast for the full year. And you will see this will be available by tomorrow uh, that we are actually done grading uh, our expectation for 2021. We were um, uh, before uh, tomorrow planning for minus 52% in passenger traffic for 2021. <coughs> we are now doing grading our baseline scenario to minus 64% for the year. Uh, again, the details will be published tomorrow. In terms of uh, policy engagement, uh, of course, we're we're very busy talking with the European institution on the digital um, uh, green certificates, which will provide air travelers with a system of interoperable health certificates showing proof of vaccination, proof of testing and proof of recovery. Uh, I must say we're, we're quite uh, positive on this in the sense that there's a lot of work underway now at EU and national level to get that system starting in June, which would be a very good news. Um, I don't think the system will start across all 27 European countries in one go. Some countries will take a bit more time and will have a transition period. But I think this would, should help uh, foster a new dynamic in terms of easing travel. Of course, we still don't know what the precise conditions and criteria for travel based on their certificates within Europe will be, and also between Europe and the rest of the world. Um, this is where the progress is still slow because we, we see very much that from the EU side, but from also European governments, there's not much willingness to engage now on discussing this because of the very difficult epidemiological situation we still find ourselves in. So our hope is that this epidemiological situation will improve significantly based on the rollout of the vaccine over the next two months so that then we can start the discussions for a coordinated, hopefully coordinated European approach on what exactly the conditions will be for easing travel restrictions in time for the summer. But as you can see, still a lot of work to do. Uh, I will stop here and uh, thank uh, Caroline from CSNA International, Claudio from Almaviva, Daniel from NG, uh, Jan Willem from Asaya, and Casper for uh, Copenhagen uh, Optimization for joining us today and sharing with us their expertise, their know-how, on innovative technology, technology and, and processes. Uh, moving forward, I think it's very clear that efficiency across the board in airport operations and management uh, will be a clear imperative in the recovery and beyond. And uh, we hope that uh, those very fine examples uh, today will, uh, will help show the way forward. I will now pass the floor to Ruud Hummels from TO70 and thanking warmly again, Runes, for uh, accepting to moderate once again this this panel today. Uh, Ruth, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Olivier. Uh, thanks also for the update on the numbers, even though uh, the numbers uh, uh, are not uh, very promising. Um, also for the emails that we are receiving as World Business Partner on a regular basis. Um, we now indeed uh, move over uh, to this uh, second webinar uh, of the year, uh, focused at sharing uh, uh, information and ideas from the World Business Partner community uh, with the airport members of ACI. Uh, today's webinar is all about uh, leveraging uh, data intelligence. Uh, we all and, and the speakers uh, all have different uses or ideas to utilize the data that is uh, available to us. Um, after the five presentations, we will uh, again run a short Q&A for which we already received a couple of questions uh, by the people that uh, signed up for the webinar. But do feel free uh, to add uh, questions via the chat functionality of Teams. Um, I also uh, would like to uh, remind you that uh, in the members room of the ACI Europe website, uh, you will find uh, a copy of today's presentations as well as a recording of the webinar. Um, and uh, there you will also find uh, the dates of the webinars that uh, we will uh, continue to host uh, in the uh, coming months. Uh, as well as the dates for uh, some other events like the Commercial Forum and the Sustainability Summit. Um, for now, uh, I would like uh, uh, all the speakers to turn off uh, the camera and everything else, uh, all the other um, uh, people to uh, uh, mute yourself as we move to the first speaker of today, uh, Caroline uh, Sapriel, founder and managing partner of CSNA an international uh, risk, crisis and business continuity management firm specializing in crisis anticipation, detection, prevention and mitigation. Uh, the company was founded uh, 30 years ago already by Caroline herself and operates globally from key geographic uh, locations in Asia, Europe and North America. Over to you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to be sharing my screen right away. So thank you, Olivier and Ruth, for this introduction. It's a pleasure to contribute to this uh, webinar series by ACI and to come back and contribute to ACI Europe um, today. Um, we are indeed a risk crisis and business continuity management firm. And so our uh, angle into today's webinar is how to utilize, and for lack of a better word, leverage data management to improve crisis resilience, both from a prevention uh, uh, potential, but also response and recovery. And so what I'm going to do today is, is, is really talk about uh, two or three tools, two of which are our partner's tools, one is our own. And those tools really allow airports, airport operations to uh, improve their data management with a view of improving um, their risk mitigation and crisis response. We have extensive experience in the airport and aviation sector for more than 30 years, both airlines and, and airports in multiple locations, uh, but also in other risk, um, high-risk industries such as oil and gas, uh, nuclear, and, and, and others. Um, and this is where we've basically honed in our, our capability in this space and also have developed a number of solutions that help organizations utilize data and data management to improve this detection and response capability. So let's take a look at the first, uh, the first tool that we would like to, to introduce here, which is really after scanning the market is as far as we're concerned, the best in class. Uh, some of you may be familiar with Everbridge. Everbridge started off as a mass notification um, uh, platform that uh, really scans and notifies multiple, multiple um, people at the same time in the event of an event that uh, needs to be notified or an incident that has taken place where mass notification, rapid notification is actually critical to safety and to uh, management and response and recovery to this event or incident that is taking place or might take place. 
Um, Everbridge um, not only notifies everyone, it has this incredible risk scanning capability, which um, helps organizations uh, scan the whole horizon, can actually help employees, but also visitors to uh, the airport, passenger staff, anybody that are that are is in the airport grounds or around of an impending event, a risk out there or something already taking place so that people can take the actions they need to take to actually uh, protect themselves and their environment. So it keeps employees safe everywhere. It can anticipate and prevent disruptions to operations. It will alert residents and visitors accelerates clinical response, that's particularly important on, on airport grounds, and obviously automate in IT incident response. And it has the different components, which obviously uh, clients and airports can utilize and configure to their own specification. Obviously, there's a very safe connection. Uh, there's a visual and virtual command center. Um, it has the capability for IT alert. Mass notification, as I have said, which is the first step in being able to be make sure people are safe, uh, public warning, but also an actual crisis management or I would say operational emergency response capability. The second tool we want to present today is also another one which I, we find is best in class. So obviously there's a lot of products out there scanning media, social media for possible um, information or posts or, or public or, 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 or any sort of stakeholders uh, that may actually have a negative, potential negative connotation. A lot of the platforms out there are based on sentiment. The difference of public sonar is that the algorithms behind the scene are incredibly powerful to detect not only sentiments that may be applicable to marketing and branding needs, but actually to event management, event prevention, and response and incident response. Um, this is used by the police, by, by a fire department, by multiple industries, as well as public institutions in many places around the world, and is considered really uh, an indispensable tool if you want to try and track what both passengers in and around airports uh, are actually posting and the danger that they this may pose or the risk that this may pose. The last one we wanted to introduce quickly is our own tool, which uh, you may not believe, but we actually founded and pioneered in 1998. Uh, at that time, crises were managed very much manually. Um, none of this uh, was done virtually securely. Uh, which we felt was absolutely critical uh, in order to remove the communication bottlenecks of crisis teams and their sub teams during an, during a, an actual crisis. Um, it has this global virtual crisis management capability. In fact, we coined the term VCME, virtual crisis management environment. Um, as far back as 98. Obviously, now everybody's used to virtual, and we've obviously updated this platform multiple times since. It is completely secure. It provides accurate uh, data sharing uh, and management of information during, um, during, a cri during an incident or in the lead up to an incident or a crisis. And it enables the teams to be truly proactive. So these are the three tools. I'm conscious of the time. I don't want to take uh, the time from my uh, colleague speakers. Uh, these are the tools that we wanted to introduce. Uh, our experience is that in effective crisis response, but also prevention and recovery, depends very much on access and management of data. Uh, the data is out there. A lot of it is uh, through artificial intelligence already. And, um, and the question is, how do you get to that data? What do you do with it? to allow you to mitigate whatever event is coming your way. And this is what these three tools are about. They can work together and can be integrated for, uh, for airport operation um, and others as well. So thank you very much. I'll pass on to the next speaker and happy to answer any questions um, afterwards. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Caroline. Um... Our next speaker today is uh, Claudio Tomei, um, an industry uh, veteran from Italy uh, who uh, is now the airport solutions manager at Almaviva. Um, 
Almaviva is one of the biggest ICT companies in Italy um, who has recently uh, decided to also expand into the aviation uh, sector. Um, I welcome Claudio uh, as a new world business partner to ACI and also very pleased to see uh, the willingness of Almaviva uh, to provide an active contribution uh, to uh, ACI. So uh, over to you, Claudio. And please unmute yourself. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Rud. And uh, thanks to ACI to give us the possibility to introduce uh, uh, Almaviva and uh, its uh, solutions in uh, the airport markets. Uh, as um, uh, Rud said, uh, Almaviva is, uh, even if we have a, a big experience in the uh, air trans uh, transportation uh, sectors, we are new in the airport uh, uh, market. And um, so we will give you few uh, information about our company. So we are an international company uh, formed by 16 uh, good companies and uh, we have 62 offices uh, in the world. We are 45,000 uh, professionals uh, working especially in the CRM and the ECT and the digital, digital sector. And uh, we are the fifth uh, private Italian group uh, in terms of uh, employees uh, worldwide. Um, MovaSem is uh, the solution that we would like to introduce you today. And uh, it is uh, compliant with the uh, airport for the .0, uh, concept. Uh, and um, to bring uh, a digital innovation to enhance infrastructure, to increase operational efficiency and achieve uh, consist consistent uh, cost uh, optimization. Uh, MOVA um, is um, part of a uh, MOVA is the platform, digital platform that Almaviva uh, designed uh, for the transportation uh, uh, sector, and uh, SEM is a product part of the of this uh, this platform. With uh, SEM, MOVA SEM, we is a, uh, practically is a smart equipment management, so we can uh, manage uh, uh, from remote and monitor and diagnostic. Uh, the airport uh, infrastructures. Uh, the, the three main functions are uh, monitoring, so we can monitor all the inf uh, infrastructure in, in the airport, the devices. We can also monitor uh, the uh, power consumption, uh, gas, water, or electrical systems. Uh, we can uh, also um, uh, monitor the uh, envir environmental uh, parameters. Uh, and uh, we can have also we have also predictive predictive maintenance uh, functionalities, so we can uh, have a, a diagnostic very important to help uh, to reduce the the risk of uh, failure, so the operational uh, uh, times uh, out of time, uh, out of service time. And uh, we have also the remote management, so everything is uh, possible to. To remote uh, to manage uh, from remote uh, and uh, uh, so it means that if you for example in an airport with uh, several uh, um, buildings or terminals you can uh, from a central control room you can manage uh, all the infrastructure that you have in the different uh, buildings and terminals and uh, recently we also uh, added the vocal service to the platform so the um, the commands can be uh, made just using the, the voice. Uh, the, the platform uh, is uh, made by a network of IoT sensors distributed uh, in, the, in, the, in the airport. They are connected with the gateways that collect the information coming from the sensors and uh, pass them to the processing uh, platform where uh, <clears throat> the uh, the, 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 the information are uh, treated and uh, managed and then uh, passed to the control room where through uh, specific, uh, specific GUIs uh, the, you can uh, uh, verify the status of the different uh, infrastructure. You can have uh, 
information about uh, the consumptions. Uh, uh, you can also have uh, alert about uh, problems that are uh, in, the, in on the platform. And uh, these are uh, some examples of the dashboard uh, available uh, about uh, real-time consumption or uh, consumption uh, statistics, or you can have the alert on a different uh, year. You can see a map, geographic map, because uh, it could be used uh, in, uh, geographically. Uh, yeah, the red dot are for uh, where there is an alert, so you can click just on the, the red dot and you have the information about the, the alert. Uh, it's um, the MoveSM works in uh, an interactive way with uh, a plant uh, of the, 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 the terminal. So you just like, you can just click on the infrastructure that you want to, to monitor, and uh, you can see all the information about the uh, the, the specific uh, infrastructure. And um, yes, you can uh, interact and send commands and uh, see also if there are uh, uh, TPCC camera um, with uh, associated with the infrastructure, you can uh, uh, switch on them and see in real time what's, what's uh, happening uh, there. And uh, which are the, the, the main benefits of uh, MOVA? Uh, for sure, you will have a sensible saving on energy consumption because you have 100% uh, of the energy consumption monitored and uh, you can uh, reduce uh, sensibly the CO2 emission. Uh, there will be also important savings on the maintenance cost uh, because you you can identify uh, preventively the, the failures. You can uh, so reduce drastically the infrastructure out of time, uh, out service time, and then you can recover rapidly from the emergency situations. You will improve the passenger experience because less failures, less problems, uh, and uh, uh, the, 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 the passenger path in the airport will be smoother and uh, the, the airport efficiency will be brought at a higher level. And um, the, this platform is, uh, or this solution is uh, integrable with the HAPOC platform uh, to help, you know, the stakeholders to manage uh, better the possible uh, crisis or prevent the crisis in the airport. So MOVA is not uh, something magical, but uh, it gives you uh, all the instruments and information to be used to get easily the expected uh, benefit. So thanks to everybody for the time. And uh, if you need any information, uh, contact uh, us and uh, uh, we will um, please to answer to your question afterwards. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Claudia. Um, we move on to our third speaker of today, uh, Daniel Cabagnol, uh, aviation ATC professional and uh, head of the aeronautical product lines at NG Solutions. Uh, I mainly know NG as a provider of energy and facilities management services, but uh, maybe you would like to correct me on that, uh, Daniel. Hello. Do you see my screen? Yes, we do. OK, thank you very much. Uh, uh, hello to everybody. Indeed, uh, I, I will try to uh, surprise you in terms of um, activities from ANG, which is known uh, as mainly as an energy supplier, green energy, of course. And uh, today I will uh, focus on uh, the uh, airports, NG airport activities and aviation which is quite original and um, first for energy, green energy, but also for uh, all the um, maintenance and technical support on the airports, but also on um, decision support to make decision making. So let's let's see what's uh, the uh, what's about. We are uh, we are talking today about the, the passenger journey around uh, across the terminal and in in the special uh, context. Uh, improved airport terminal experience. 
with a smoother passenger journey gives a boost to airport terminal profitability. It directly impacts two factors. First, the provision made for passenger doing shopping or simply having some rest at the different restaurants and cafeterias on the, of the terminal. And second factor is that the passenger experience uh, or passenger satisfaction uh, increases when there is no rush, no delay uh, in the flights. And the passenger uh, starts his smart airport trip as he arrives at the terminal, parking stand, public transportation, taxis. It can also start when he leaves his home. The passenger is then guided in a smart way across the terminal until, until the boarding gates close to the aircraft. The airport terminal shall be prepared for a traffic restart. Everybody hopes so. That will definitely arise and to and, uh, increase safety conditions for passengers indeed, but also for employees working at airport airline customs, shops, etc. What has changed with pandemic is that the airport terminal should be prepared for regular operations, <coughs> preserving and securing airport revenues. And while applying additional sanit sanitary rules and also managing as seamless as possible and schedule switches back and forth, between normal and emergency situations. This is quite new. The target is therefore to offer more services with less constraints. Here is a view of uh, the different NG activities and capabilities in the airport field. So we see that it goes from uh, access to the airport, connections to the city, then within the terminal itself, we call those so that's the land size. Then we move to the runway, which is called the air side, and then taking care of the flights from one airport to the other. It's called the air traffic control, and you can see the different companies within the NG group that takes part into the airport activities. Here is a, a global view of uh, NG presence on the international uh, airport market. And uh, you see also the different solutions uh, we integrate from uh, energy to security and the different products uh, we are designing and we are uh, that are currently at the state of the art. Now concerning a more precise view on the passenger journey. So we uh, propose integrated solutions which um, are based on the services which one should be aware of uh, for each airport operating which are operated differently and the specific configuration that is uh, usually a mix of legacy and new features therefore new real-time solutions new services shall be fully adapted to each airport it shall be customized to its current requirements tailored and optimized for its future operation which means more operational flexibility in addition to scalability for potential extended capacity measuring in real time in real time passenger flows contributes to anticipating and avoiding unpleasant situations for passengers such as congestion at check-in immigration security checks and boarding points Assessment of passenger volumes in precise rooms and flows at predefined points is performed using algorithms and sensors such as photocells, cameras, radars, 
cellular telephone activities. Each solution brings in specific features. Facility management may sure benefit from these tools. For example, cleaning operations of rooms are started both at on a periodic uh, base and on specific occurrences such as attendance reaches reaching certain thre thresholds. Coordination with other airport services and systems is performed taking advantage of the existing data networks distributing ACDM related information, collaborative decision making, and managed by the airport's operational control centers, the app, APOC or equivalent. A few examples of operational control centers delivered by NG are provided. On the left, you can see the Antwerpen uh, Police Security Control Center in Belgium. Top right, you have the uh, Brussels International Airport Baggage Handling Operating and Maintenance Control Center. And bottom right, you have the Paris Police Security Control Center, a very huge center. Adding new functionalities and working position to an existing operational center shall also be performed at reasonable cost. Related capex shall be carefully assessed on the long run and shall be realistic, not only during pandemic periods. Solutions are of two kinds. It is either industrial bricks to enhance services as we saw them, and we can add the personal smartphone acting as a kind of embedded means to keep the contacts with each passenger during the, his airport journey. Smart and contextual information displays both acting as a fallback means. But on top of that, you have augmented reality, reality information that can be inserted on passengers' smartphones to create a more secured and cozier environment. But it also could, could be turnkey solutions designed with a global and fully coherent system. As a service types of financial schemes, paper use are also worth being considered. Thank you very much for your attention and we are ready for questions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Daniel. Um, <clears throat> the fourth speaker of the day is uh, Jan Willem Kappes, um, Director of Business Development uh, for the EMEA and APEC regions at ASAIA, uh, who also gave a presentation during one of the webinars uh, uh, last year. Uh, good to have you back. Um, for those that uh, uh, don't know or uh, don't remember, uh, ASIA is an innovative aviation software company uh, that provides an artificial intelligence solution focused mainly on the turnaround process. Uh, Jan Willem, over to you. Thank you very much, Ruud. Uh, glad to be back. Hello, everyone. Um, today, I want to, to talk about predicted off-block times um and how we can create value by by predictability so why why are off block times important um right now we have two areas where off block times flow into that is all ground and passenger related handling activities um so so basically everything is either based on on block or on off block on block plus or off block minus uh, x minutes but at the same time, the, the, the off-block prediction or the target off-block time also uh, strongly correlates with the efficiency of the actual taxiway, runway or airspace system. Now, the status quo of off-block times, although they are so important, is actually a bit difficult because most in most cases, the target off-block time is still being transmitted manually and also the, the actual decision of what the target off block time is, is done by a human being. Now, human beings have good days, they have bad days, they have horrible days. 
Um, at the same time, this also may or may not reflect in the actual target off block time, which, as I just uh, laid out, may have a tremendous effect on the overall capacity of an airport or the, or the entire network. Um, at the same time, they are often updated only once or twice, uh, sometimes even very late during the turnaround, so that any mitigation strategy is kind of lost. Um, now, what are we doing with the predicted off-block time? So what we did is we said, okay, we get various input data sources. These could be manual inputs. Uh, these could be data that we receive from an AODB. Uh, it could be data we receive from an IoT sensor, or it could also be data that we receive from the computer vision um, that we use at Asaya with our Apron AI. Um, then we use our uh, own developed or, or developed uh, AI machine learning algorithm um, that we did for specifically the predicted off-block time. And with this, we then achieve a continuous and accurate off-block time prediction. So when I speak about continuous and accurate, it means that it can be updated every minute, every two minutes, every five minutes, uh, dependent on what you as an airport would like to see. And it is more accurate because it no longer only relies on a manual guess or an academic guess, um, which may be better or, or not as good, dependent on the person who do, does this guess, but it is something that is purely based on data. Uh, we take historic data into, um, into, uh, uh, into the, the calculation, but also real-time data. So that means that um, we have an understanding of what happened in the past, but also what is the current status of the actual turnaround. Um, what are the benefits? So the first benefit that everyone may directly think about is that we have a lower mean error. As you can see, uh, see here, we did a, a test, a simulation with data we received from four of our customers. Uh, and you, you can see that currently the, the TOBT has a mean error from six and a half minutes down to somewhere five and a half minutes, dependent on how, how much time you have left before uh, actual off-block time. And here you see our POBT. Uh, it starts as a mean error of around five minutes, and then it goes down to, to uh, less than two minutes at actual off-block time. But what is important is that from about 15 minutes before the actual off-block time, the uh, lower mean error uh, decreases significantly. And this is something that we did as a simulation based on the data we received. If we would now be able to get more historic data, if we would be able to get more real-time data, um, we have shown already in the last couple of months that this can be even improved. So uh, the algorithm has been improved uh, since this uh, last study and also the data set. But now we come to something that, in my opinion, is even more important. Because the mean error, okay, that's, that's nice. But what you want to avoid is that you have a huge variance. Because if you are now two minutes or three minutes or five minutes later, uh, if the, the off-block time is later than the actual off-block time, you want to be as, as, as clear as possible. But what you definitely want to avoid is that you have your 20 minutes or your 15 minutes or your 10 minutes. Uh, and what you can see here is the average variance with our predicted off-block time is much lower than the variance in the target off-block time, especially when we go to 10 or 5 minutes before actual off-block time. And that means that our predicted off-block time results in a more stable prediction which then can be used by airports to, for example, uh, re reduce the buffers for stand allocation, stand planning. Um, you can plan closer to each other. You have a better understanding of when an, a flight will probably get, get off block already before the uh, actual flight arrives at the airport. Um, what is the value of more accurate off block time predictions? As I said before, you have a higher stand taxiway and runway utilization. Because, because you better know what will happen uh, and what will be a potential delay. You have an overall reduction in delays because with a more accurate off-block time, you also uh, find a better fitting uh, target startup approval time. And with this, you also have a more predictable or you have a stronger 
slot allocation and uh, less flights that are missing their slots. And you also improve airport and airline sustainability because in better being able to allocate flights to aircraft stands, uh, you also reduce the occasions where an, an arriving flight has to idle on the apron in order to wait for the stand that it is allocated to to become free. What is the, the proof of value? So I can talk a lot, but basically if you look at the TSET window adherence, so we found out that um, normally one third of the flights that were in this sample um, that, I was, uh, that I'm speaking about, they missed their departure slot. So the TSET plus minus five minutes, and that's primarily because the TSET Jan Willem, you were muted. Can you hear me again? Yes. Oh, good. So, sorry. Um, so, one third of all flights um, missed their TSET because the TOBT was too far off, and the TSET is based on the TOBT. Uh, and what we found out is that flights that are within there or where the TOBT error is within the TSET window have on average a lower TOBT error than for ex uh, the, the sorry the departure delay for flights where the TOBT error is within the TSET plus minus five minutes is considerably shorter than when they are outside of the TSET. That means that you can actively reduce delays at your airport with having a much more predictable off-block time. Um, and that is one of the, the strongest values that you can generate. And with that, I'll leave it for the question and answer section. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jan Willem. Um, we move over to the uh, last speaker of, the, of today, Casper uh, Hunsgaard, who is a returning speaker. Um, uh, he was also present at the first uh, series of webinars. Uh, he is the CEO and co-founder of Copenhagen Optimization, uh, with 10 years of experience from Copenhagen Airport prior to founding uh, the company. Um, he has worked with uh, clients world, worldwide, both in consultancy as with uh, the better airport solution that they have on offer. Please unmute. Thank you. Practicality that you'd gotten a hold of this, but apparently not. Thanks, Ruth, for the, uh, for the introduction. So um, what I'll talk about for the next, uh, say, about seven minutes is, is how this volatility that we have seen in the, um, in the traffic schedules over the last, at least last year, can be turned into an opportunity. So Olivier, in his uh, introduction, uh, again, talked about a bit depressive numbers in terms of the traffic, which means that there's not a lot to do in the airports, but there's a small group of people in the airports who are have been on on kind of overtime work since this pandemic broke out. And that's really the, the operational planners and the analysts, because there are so many changes happening, not only to the operation, but also to the traffic schedules. So, so what is that actually meaning for the, uh, the planning puzzle of an airport? So let's take a look at that. So we saw this headline uh, a few weeks ago, which which kind of sparked the theme for this uh, webinar presentation. And well, back to the future, we're like, well, not really. I think at least in, in the planning and, and analyst space of an airport, what this has shown is that there's still a lot of things that are happening manually. And happening manually, it's okay if you do it twice a year. So take the slot allocation process. I'll, I'll have that as an example later, but you did that twice a year, it may be a bit of a manual exercise, but it worked. Now, right now you're, you're handing out new slots and, and you're getting new slot requests several times a week because the airlines are constantly changing their, their schedules. So how can we accelerate a process like that? First and foremost, it's about data. So the need for data needs to be accelerated. And, and if you have that solid data, 
you can automate a lot of the decision making. And, and that's really what we've been working with airports to do over the last year. And also before that is let's eliminate anything manual and let's make a, a, a solid software solution do 95% of the job for you. Of course, that requires data. So first, it's about the identification of the data and understanding of the pain points. Then once you have that in place, you can start identifying opportunities. So you will have a lot of opportunities. Then it's about prioritization around the areas. Where do I have the biggest pain points? Airports are now facing um, ch challenges in check-in as traffic comes back, but the digitalization of, of the, say, the, the vaccine status is, is not fully integrated to any airline system across the globe. So suddenly automation is gone. You can't just back, say, go to the backdrop and drop your back because you have to make a check that I actually am valid to travel to the country that I'm traveling to. What is that going to mean? And then it's about the automation. How do you pick this data up on, on a regular automated basis? And then actually the harder part of this is adjusting the processes. You may, and, and your colleagues in the airport may actually have to work differently. So how are you going to tackle that challenge? And then once you're at the bottom of this, then you're ready to optimize. So there are some, some clear steps that needs to be taken, but they can be taken and they can really drive good value. As I said before, here's an example of, of an automated planning flow for the slot allocation process and the seasonal planning process of an airport. This was before a manual process. We've now turned that into an automated planning flow. So the first step that happens in the slot allocation process is that you will have scheduled data sent to the airport. That can be through emails, through fax, through different solutions. It can be manual. It can be automated. We've automated all of that, translated through APIs into uh, traffic schedule information on a per line basis. And now we know, okay, what's the traffic schedule that we have every day? And we'll then transfer that into a, to our planning solution and then start looking at, if these are the new slots that I'm getting in, how does that look compared to my existing schedule and evaluate that across all the operational areas? And, and that's what we then do automatically based on the setup of the solution. So. We've already set up our, our forecasting solution. We're looking at security, we're looking at border, we're looking at baggage, we're looking at check-in, we're looking at standing gate. Is this gonna fit or is it not gonna fit? You can then deep dive into every single day and understand, okay, will it fit or will it not fit? Or what if I change this process, will it then fit? And then you can then automatically feed that information back to the airlines. Is it a, an accept? Is it a decline? Is it a request for change? And then transferring that back into the slot database and eventually the information is sent back to the airlines. Now, this was a process that more or less consumed the full individual at all the time after COVID-19 hit. It was normally a full individual for a couple of weeks, twice a year. Now it's just a full individual and a little bit more. So with the, with the solution that we've implemented together with the airport, they're now actually able to do this in a, really in a matter of minutes and, and it's way faster than it was before. So aviation has changed, that's for sure. We want to make sure that, that we're changing this for the better. This is a golden opportunity to actually make changes in your airport operation. We can see already now, looking a bit, uh, if we look across the Atlantic and look to the US market, for instance, well, they've not changed their processes. Right now, traffic is coming back and we're already seeing like wait times reported for TSA above 30 minutes for a, a lot of airports but we're still only at index 60 or something. I know that, that yes, peak periods are the ones that are coming back faster as, as we, we predicted early on is the peaks are the ones that will come back first and then the, you will fill up the shoulders. How are airports gonna tackle that challenge? Because that will be a challenge. So volatility, it's gonna be here for a while. I think personally, the next two, three, four years will, will be quite volatile. Hopefully there'll not be too much of, of this driven by COVID, but just as the airlines are ramping back up and finding out what's actually the new thing to do with our schedules. You'll we'll see new traffic patterns. You have regulation, especially right now, but that will most likely also continue. And then you have to pick up new data. You have a lot of data maybe from the past, but does that still apply? It's the transaction times that you surveyed in check-in two years ago, still the transaction time today. I bet you it's not. So, what are the opportunities here? Well, you can automate this. You can automate the, the data collection. You can also automate the planning, just like uh, Jan from Asaya talked about using the machine learning components. 
Asayas using it on the on on the prediction of of important turnaround uh, or ACDM times. In our world, we're using it more for the planning process to make sure that we can really automate the planning process that we can make as accurate forecasts for for the passion flow as possible. And then it's about the consolidation of, of solutions. Why was it so manual? Well, it was because you were using two, three, four, five different solutions for the same challenge and the same process. And then the last element is we want to be better. So how do we make sure that we are agile? How do we right size the organization? It is a new world. A lot of airports have unfortunately had to lay off a, a large number of, of, of people. Now that hopefully they'll have to rehire a lot of these as traffic comes back, how will the organization look? And then at the end of the day, we want to have a safe and excellent travel experience, but, but I think safe will stay. Safe is not going to go away with COVID-19 going away. Passengers will not congregate and, and, and accept being so close to each other as they sometimes were before. And then it's really about rethinking and optimizing. So with that, I'll turn it over back to you, Ruth, and to the Q&A session. Thank you. Yes, if I can uh, invite uh, the speakers to uh, again turn on their cameras and uh, microphone. Uh, we had a couple of interesting questions come in uh, in the chat functionality. Uh, first one I would like to uh, uh, raise with Caroline uh, from Ansgar. Um, if it becomes uh, public knowledge that police, airports monitor social media uh, to identify potential threats, uh, does this not bear the risk of people deliberately po posting hoax messages? Um, a good good question. I, I really don't think that uh, it, even if this is the case, it des definitely doesn't outweigh the benefit of having a proper and comprehensive and very powerful monitoring capability. The fact is that there has always been hoaxes and fakes around airports and some jurisdiction even prosecute for fake bombarding, which are done by phone, for example, um, in order to delay flights by passengers who are running behind. So I think uh, airport operations are very strict around these things. And, and I think the capability of a platform that does go out and really monitor, scan all open source for potential risk, as opposed to just let's look at marketing and branding information, is invaluable for airport security and passenger safety. So I think the risks, uh, the, the benefits far outweigh any possible risk and the risks exist anyways. And a criteria need to apply by whoever's doing the monitoring the same way that you would uh, monitor any fake news. Thank you. Um, I also uh, noticed a couple of questions that came in uh, following or during Jan Willem's uh, presentation. Um, uh, let's try and capture both of them at the same time. Uh, on the one hand, uh, a question came in uh, on whether you plan to connect uh, the, these predictions uh, with the target airports. Uh, and the other question had to do uh, with uh, the product, whether uh, this is also focused on capturing event data from the turnaround process or only focuses on predicting uh, the TOBT. Yep. Thank you very much. Uh, two, two very good questions. Let me first answer the one regarding the, the target airports. Absolutely. I mean, that is one of our key goals. Uh, we want to, or we, we start in a first phase with applying the POBT on the departure airport level. But in the end, um, the goal is to send it to the arrival airport as well, because then there you already have a chance to make the necessary um, um, accommodations uh, when you know that the, that the aircraft will be late, for example. But we want to even go further and send it to Eurocontrol, send it to the, to the US authorities to basically improve the overall network. So we have already been speaking to Eurocontrol, to some other um, uh, ANSPs, uh, in order to make the whole network more predictable and more efficient. Um, covering the second question briefly, uh, basically, the uh, capturing of event data from the turnaround process was or is our key product is uh, the Efren AI. That, that is what we started with, uh, where we created, uh, I would say, the, 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 the only real solution that is currently out there. Um, and then we saw that using this data, connecting it with AODB data, connecting it, connecting it with other sensor data um, helps in, in, in making these POBT predictions. Thank you. 
Um, maybe if I now uh, move over to Claudio, also making use of some of the questions that uh, were uh, shared with us prior to the uh, webinar. Um, Muva Sem, um, uh, the product that you were uh, talking about, uh, is it is this also uh, uh, can this be integrated with the existing uh, infrastructures and systems that are currently uh, used at airports? Um, yes, uh, yeah, as, as we, we we are aware that uh, in the in each airport there are already infrastructure and system present. So for this reason and uh, also thanks to our uh, long experience as a system integrator, we have designed the MoveSM architecture as open as possible and uh, and both the the use of the technology uh, and the internal system structure make uh, MoveSM uh, very flexible and very easy to integrate. So it's uh, yes, it's uh, it's possible, and it's it. our our job is to uh, really to integrate all the existing uh, system and infrastructure locally present locally in uh, one uh, unique uh, platform. Thank you, um, Daniel. Uh, a question for you. Um, uh, as I mentioned, I mainly know you as a as an energy uh, and facilities uh, management service provider. Um, what you presented, it seems as if you are positioning yourself also as a solutions provider. Is that, would that be a, a correct conclusion from your presentation? Yes, indeed. Indeed, we, we are uh, delivering um, turnkey solutions. And this was the way I tried to present our activity yeah. um, over the terminal in particular. We are already working on the air side as I said, and uh, on the air traffic control, but we have delivered several systems and Turkey, and this is what's uh, in which way uh, NG can act to integrate global solutions and to integrate the different actors, which are uh, such as my colleagues uh, speakers of today, because on the airport uh, you might not act um, independently because there are lots of several interactions and uh, as we are actors on the runways on the towers in the control towers in the baggage handling uh, systems we, we know that it's quite uh, tough uh, th these activities are quite tough, and as uh, my colleagues speakers said, uh, they have to be um, synchronized and coordinated between the different um, actors and uh, through uh, systems like uh, APOC or ACDM or uh, different uh, safety systems. So that, that's why we uh, are uh, present in this area, in this field, starting from the energy, from <laughs> This is our uh, ADN, uh, IRN, and um, so we will we, we go on. And I would like to, to mention that we are working on new solutions such as the Green Airport. We are part of different uh, consortiums on that in France, but also uh, at the international level. On um, uh, digital towers, it was not yeah. mentioned today, but it's also one direction that could also uh, help uh, support developing um, terminal activities yeah. Yeah. Uh, and also high ports uh, for uh, new uh, ways of uh, moving. I see that uh, uh, our colleagues uh, speakers are from different uh, parts of the world and which are also involved and in where cities such as Copenhagen and uh, in Italy also uh, in France are involved in the new uh, ways of um, uh, carrying people from one point to the other. So this is also uh, a topic which we have to develop and that where um, terminal and uh, concessions and um, uh, will be involved, definitely. Kasper, if I uh, may also ask you uh, uh, an almost final question. Um, how are you seeing the movement towards automation at the airports you uh, are working with at present? Yes, I, it's happening. It's 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 happening faster and faster, I would say. I, I also think airports are starting to realize that they actually have more data than they thought, especially in the airport operation, which has 
I think, historically been quite siloed. But if you start asking the right questions and really looking for the data, uh, it, it's coming. At the same time, I think sometimes we meet airports that honestly, they don't have uh, any kind of data infrastructure. They are storing all their data in Excel documents and, and you get a little bit frightened because that's not the right way to store data. And it's very, very hard to share in real time. So um, I, there are some that are doing a really good job and we can see what the benchmark is. There are some that, that still needs to, uh, to hop on to the very exciting journey of, of liberating all that data. But there, there's still some way. I see. I see one person uh, laughing there. Uh, maybe it may be a question to all of you. Um, what uh, do you see the role of uh, artificial intelligence in uh, in airport operations and management uh, over the next decade? Uh, another question that came in uh, uh, prior to the webinar. Anyone uh, who would like to uh, uh, answer this open question? Anyone to take the floor? Yeah, I I can, early, Jan Willem. Yeah, I can. Maybe we have AI in our product name, uh, so yeah. <laughs> I guess we have something to say there. Uh, I guess that artificial intelligence for the aviation industry and and Casper, honestly, I, I couldn't have said it better. Is is probably something that is for the moment still um, a bit of a moonshot. I have to be honest. Uh, the aviation industry is is very safety based and 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 moves forward slowly. I think that also has to do with simply the fact that there is a, a low profit margin and, and, and mistakes are, are, are dearly. Um, but when we look at capacity, when we look at network capacity, airport capacity, when we look at sustainability, reducing CO2 emissions, um, this will no longer be possible to manage with data silos, to manage with human beings. Uh, the human will always be part of the equation but artificial intelligence will be needed in order to, to make suggestions, to guide the human, to make the most optimal uh, decision. Yeah, and if I, can, if I can add to that, I think AI should be, or machine learning should be used where it's really applicable. I mean, solving the standing gate allocation puzzle of an airport in itself is, is not a machine learning problem. That's a mathematical optimization and algorithmic problem. But getting the right input parameters for that problem, like like Jan was talking about with the with the predictions of the of the off block times, of course makes that planning puzzle better because the better your input parameters, the better your your final result. So so to me, and the way we're looking at it is, machine learning is 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 really going to be applied to create more accurate input parameters. The same with the passion forecast. We're using uh, like we're we're constantly developing our machine learning as we get more and more data. And it is providing better and better forecasts, but those forecasts still have to be put to life. If we're not putting them into the security operation, if we're not putting them in the hands of, of the border police, well, we could have the most accurate prediction in the world, but, but it still needs to go to the floor. So, so I think that's also some of what we're really working on is, is getting all this great stuff that we can do uh, here in Copenhagen to the floor of airports worldwide, because that's where the value is created. Thank you. That, that's a very uh, inspiring message uh, uh, to conclude uh, this webinar uh, with, I would say. Um, I would again uh, like to thank uh, ACI for hosting uh, these webinars. Um, uh, thank you speakers uh, and thank you airports for listening to us. Um, as always, uh, the presentations will be shared with those uh, that have subscribed to the webinar uh, and will be available on the member section of uh, uh, ACI website. Uh, and uh, we hope to see you again in a month's time, uh, the 20th of May, uh, when we uh, uh, do our third webinar in this series. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a nice rest of the day. Bye. 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 Bye.